Hey everybody, welcome. This is Euro Maestro, and I am broadcasting live uh, from just outside of Paris, and uh, we're going to be looking today at aqueducts, and the aqueduct of uh, Paris this is the Aqueduct de la Vanne, actually, to be more precise, but it provides water to Paris, provides 145 thousand cubic meters of water per day but i'm going to explain hey troy uh how this structure uh ties in hey shirley dutchy over on youtube by the way you can also watch this on youtube live so uh, you can watch this on periscope or on youtube live because i'm doing both at the same time uh some people say the image quality is sometimes better on youtube live but you can check it out for yourself uh, i'm on youtube right now whoops pedal so um, let's go check it out. Let's get down a little closer and take a look at this structure. And uh, let me explain a little bit about what's going on here. So uh, if we go back to ancient Rome, okay, ancient Rome was pretty cool. It had a population of over 1 million inhabitants, okay? Now this was a feat that was not able to be duplicated in Western civilization for almost... 2,000 years, not until the 19th century were we capable of having cities that large. And one of the reasons is because of the infrastructure requirements, and particularly uh, the need to bring uh, running water, running water and plumbing uh, for a million people to one city is not easy. But they were able to do it in antiquity. The ancient Romans were able to do it. We're able to do it. Uh, uh, oh, it's been a while, says Jason, since I've caught you live. How am I? I'm fine. Looks like narrow sidewalks. The sidewalks here are, in fact, pretty narrow, as you can see. Uh, but there's no traffic in the street, so you can walk in the street. But let's get a closer look, and you can see how tall uh, these aqueducts are. So like I said, this aqueduct in particular today provides 145,000 uh, cubic meters of water to Paris. That's 145 million liters of water every single day to Paris. So uh, you can see cities require a lot of water. <laughs> and uh, so that's why, um, you know, the ancient Romans were able to do it, but uh, after the barbarians took over, <laughs> uh, we were not able to do it. So now this, uh, this particular aqueduct was actually built in the 19th century, but it was built over the site of two previous aqueducts, one from the 17th century, which was built by the Medici family, uh, who wanted to bring water to Paris. You know, water in Paris at that time uh, it was very awkward because there were a lot of public fountains in the right bank. There was a fountain in the um, Ile de la Cité, but there were no fountains in the left bank. So there were 19, I think, public fountains in the right bank, uh, one in the Ile de la Cité, and none in the left bank. So King Henry IV started this project. He wanted to, to bring uh, water into Paris, particularly for uh, the people on the left bank. And uh, Marie Medici took over uh, that project uh, when the king um, was assassinated. <laughs> uh, so she took over the project. And um, one of the things she had done, as you know from my previous scopes and from my previous YouTube videos, is she built uh, the Luxembourg Gardens and the palace, which we call the Palais de Luxembourg, where the Luxembourg Gardens are. Um, but in, in order to do that, you needed water. So she had, she had an aqueduct built uh, for that, uh, which is on this site. And then, of course, the previous aqueduct, as you can probably guess, was the aqueduct of Lutetia. Now, Lutetia was the Roman name for the uh, city of Paris. And they had an aqueduct here as well. And that provided water primarily for the baths. We had baths over at Cluny. So you've seen my other YouTube videos about Cluny. And um, you will see uh, uh, there's a medieval museum there. And there's some vestiges of the, of the, uh, of the Roman baths. So look how, look how high this structure is. You're going to see here it goes to, it switches from a one-story bridge to a two-story bridge. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, especially when you think that, um, now the, the Roman version of this aqueduct was built back in the uh, second century. 
and uh, and it worked for a while until the barbarians came in. <laughs> so you remember the bar the barbarians came in in the uh, starting in the the fourth century, and so uh, the Romans sort of retweeted retreated <laughs> retreated. <laughs> I'm having trouble saying that today. Retreated from the uh, left bank and went to the um, uh, too much thinking of Twitter here, <laughs> and went to the Ile de la Cité, and um, uh, so because of this, eventually uh, the aqueduct fell out of use. Is it open to public to go on the first floor? You know, I try to get on the first floor. There is access if you go all the way down this way to the other end. Uh, it meets up um, at street level, and there is a door to have access, but the door is locked and closed, so it looks like it's not for the public. I'm assuming maybe they use it for a maintenance or something like that. But I, I can show you that section. It's a little bit of a walk from here. It's over by the train station. So this town is actually named over the ark and the vestiges of the ark from uh, from the days of when the Roman aqueduct was here in Paris. Let's try to get you a view. There is water in it today. It provides water today. It's operational and it provides 145,000 cubic meters of water to Paris every day. So that is a lot of water. So that is the aqueduct. Now we can go this way, which I haven't done before. Let's check it out. We'll see what happens. Go back a different way. Yeah, it is operational. And uh, is anybody watching on YouTube? Can you let me know how do, how do the two videos com compare? Imagine how it was before an old time. Yeah, this is what I was thinking about myself is imagining this back in the day. I mean, this must have been just such an Im incredible uh, feature. This is in um, Arcai and Cachon. So this is the name of the two towns uh, that share uh, this aqueduct. Oh, our connection. Yeah, I just saw that. I should have stayed on the other side. <laughs> the connection was good on the other side. On this side, the connection not so good. So you know what? I think I'm going to go go back to the other side only because we had better connection on the other side. So I'm going to upload a, um, a 4K video of this sometime next week. So if you guys want to go to my YouTube channel, you can see this aqueduct in 4k let's go up the other way show you the train station in the town yeah picture is frozen that's because you know i decided to go a different way to be adventurous and it, it was a way where the signal was not very good <laughs> they have sushi if you guys want sushi i think the connection will come back because I tested the connection earlier here and the connection was pretty good. So hopefully, hopefully the connection will come back. We'll see. Exactly, this is, this is one of the things that made the Romans so powerful, exactly. That's why it's interesting the importance of, yay, our signal is back on YouTube. So I think we're back to high quality video connection. Picture quality is amazing, says Shirley. So yeah, if you're not familiar with the YouTube video quality, you should check it out. Go over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Euromaestro. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Be sure to hit the likes on the video. And, uh, and you can see the difference in the video quality. Let's go further up. We can show you other parts of the aqueduct. And it leads into a nice little park as well. Well, this, this actually draws water from uh, three different rivers. 
uh, not from the Seine, and brings water into Paris. So, we may have to do a new scope later today because there's lots and lots and lots of stuff going on in the news. Here you can see the aqueduct again. I look how this house goes right under the aqueduct. <laughs> Chris is still in bed. Time to get up, sleepyhead. Hey, everyone. Yeah, it's a nice, calm day. How does it work? Well, that is a really good question. It works. I believe we got some engineers here primarily through gravity <laughs> and they just have a slight slight difference in the uh, incline in the grade which brings the water uh, into Paris classic classic Monty Python bit about what have the Romans done for us yes that's right <laughs> and it's only like everything <laughs> That, that is a great, uh, that is from uh, Life of Brian. Yeah, it's an amazing engineering feat. Where have you been? That is a really good question. <laughs> I sort of been in the twilight zone. We're gonna cross this little bridge here for the train station. Picture quality looks the same on YouTube and Periscope. Now that surprises me. Uh, that's the first time I've actually heard that. Big lightning str strike in the next street over from me. Oh no. Wow. It's been a while, you're a hobby man. I've been awesome, thanks. How are you? I'm out of shape. Oh, I don't know about that. Is your, is your device just playing 1080p? It's just 1080p. So I filmed it in 4K, but when I do a live stream, it's gonna lower the video quality down depending upon the, um, depending upon the bandwidth. So here you see how the, the aqueduct goes right over the street. David Charlot says uh, image quality is still better on YouTube. So let's go up this staircase here. It's gonna spend a lot of data. Yeah, it does take a lot of data, that's true. That's why later on I will upload a 4K video of this. Here you can see a train coming through. If you're just watching on YouTube, says Shirley. Awesome. You can see more of the sky on YouTube. That's interesting. How much time do you upload it in 4K? Well, I'm starting to do all my new YouTube videos in 4K. So I did one the other day of the Mona Lisa at the Louvre. So I haven't uh, finished uploading it yet. I still have some edits to make, but um, that's gonna be going up shortly. This one's gonna be going up shortly. And I interviewed uh, one of my fans who was in Paris and was at the Louvre 
First time on YouTube, cool. You will go and buy a 4K TV now. I know, the 4K, 4K TV is pretty cool. And actually, um, uh, Apple is gonna make, make a big announcement next month. Uh, they are gonna go uh, really heavy in supporting 4K. So I think you'll see a lot of big uh, 4K announcements uh, next month when the um, new iPhone is released. And by the way, uh, because of leaks, I haven't talked about it, but I probably should have done a scope about it. We have a really very good idea <laughs> of what the new iPhone is gonna be. There have been lots of leaks, and we have one leak from a very reliable source, which was from Apple itself. So Apple, you guys may have heard about this, they made a big mistake. Uh, when was that? Last week? Uh, last week or the week before? I think it was last week. Where they uploaded some documentation about their uh, new HomePods coming out next year. And part of that documentation had a, uh, had a non-public version of iOS 11 in it. And, and it's a couple of versions ahead of the current released version and it had some details about the new iPhone. So we have pretty much confirmation. We know exactly what the new iPhone is gonna look like and we have a pretty good idea of most of its features. 8K is a thing now, yeah, that's true. Monitor alone could cost 2,000 euros. Yeah, some of the stuff isn't cheap, but I think the future is going to go 4K. I'm definitely going to be filming everything in 4K. You can certainly watch it uh, on monitors with less than 4K resolution. Um, here you go. Now, this part is cool. You can walk underneath the aqueduct here. And I'm going to show you there's a... There's a park over here. But Samsung has the longest monitor. So as a matter of fact, I, I tweeted out earlier today, um, Samsung is starting full production this month of the OLED screens uh, for the new iPhone 8. They have seven lines at full capacity dedicated to the new iPhone. Uh, so that brings the orders up from 15,000 a month to 105,000 a month. So that, that starts full production this month. So we'll have some 200,000 um, screens available by the time the, by the, time the uh, iPhone gets announced, the new iPhone gets announced next month. All right, well, I think we're gonna end here. I think I may have run out of battery on Periscope. Talk to you guys real soon. Thanks. Bye.